What's going on guys? This is Brad with Buck and Broom Outdoors. Today we're going to be painting a four segment glide bait. I think we're going to paint some sort of shad pattern. I have then coated it with UVLS just to give the paint a nice surface to bond to and I've coated it with opaque white. So that's where we're at right now. I have a little bit of silver in the airbrush I think I'm going to use silver and gold to go down the sides. I'm going to attempt to avoid putting paint down the dorsal line. Um, and just because the next color that I use after that is probably going to be a yellow. And I want that to pop a little bit more. And it doesn't pop quite as much over the silver or the gold. So that's going to be what we do to begin with. So like I said, I got a little bit of silver in the airbrush. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully my compressor isn't too loud for you guys. We're not too worried about this silver and gold being too uniform. Something like that. Get this airbrush cleaned out we'll go with gold and i'm using a mix of different manufacturer paints so far the silver and this gold are um, vallejo and we're going to basically do the same thing a little sp splotchy uh splotchy paint job so some of the silver will pop through hopefully with the gold Give it a nice little shimmer. Something like that. Again, nothing crazy. Just trying to get some base layers down for some texture. Something like that should work. It is pouring outside, my goodness. Guess it's a good day to be inside painting some lures. I don't know if you guys can hear that but it is coming down <laughs> all right so we got that done we're just going to use just this fabric just buy it on amazon you can fold it up a bunch of different times to get as much paint from the bottom layer showing as you want or as little as you want just depends on how many times you fold this thing over uh, i think we're gonna do Tripled up might be a little thick. Let's you can kind of lay it on there and kind of get an idea of what you're what you're looking at there. I think that's going to be a little bit too much. So I think we're just going to leave it just folded over once, and we'll see what that looks like. We can always go back and change it if we need to just regular black in the airbrush all right so the plan's going to be probably come down maybe a quarter inch or so above that dorsal line at the front and then it'll obviously taper back so wherever we get back there is kind of where we get And I'm trying to avoid this texture on the gill plate. Again, if you get some on there, it's not the end of the world.
something like that. So hopefully you can see, you can still see a little bit of gold and silver kind of sparkling through there. So I think I'm happy with that. We'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So that's what we got. So we got that going. Now we'll, while we still have the black in the airbrush, we're going to go across this spine and add a little black to that, darken it up. So then when we throw our color shift on top of that, it should, uh, should pop pretty nicely. Go something about like that. We're still gonna add some black around the eyes, and I think that's gonna be pretty good with that. Before we get the black out of the airbrush, I think we're gonna throw a little bit of that same that same texture uh, ribbon. I think we're gonna put that on the gill plates. something like that like most people say you don't have to worry too much about having the paint scheme the exact same on both sides it can be very difficult to do sometimes and if you see a bunch of fish when you catch them there there's usually some some difference in their patterning from one side to the other it's better to be Better to do that when you're trying to catch fishermen, but not so much when you're trying to catch fish. Yeah, we'll do something like that. I like it, I like it. I guess we'll do one more thing while we have the black in there. We'll go ahead and darken around the eye. Help that eye pop a little bit more. that'll work. I'm going to put a shad dot on this. I'm just deciding whether I'm going to put it on now or at the end because I'm going to have some color shift over it and when you put the black down the color shift really really pops over top of that black and I'd like to have a nice black shad dot. So I think I'm going to clear the airbrush out, go to our dorsal uh, or excuse me our lateral line color and then we'll go back after we do the color shift and we'll slap our shad dot on there. We're gonna go with the neon chartreuse. Something like that. something like that I can live with that next we need to decide what color shift we're gonna use I don't know guys I'm thinking I'm thinking either the gold or pale blue or the green gold to cold blue can't decide hmm Let's go with the gold. We already have hints of gold in there already. Let me put this on the mixer real quick. I think I'm going to avoid getting it down towards the belly. I think we're just going to stay uh, dorsal and then coming down the top half of the lateral. And then we'll do a little bit around the gills and probably on the eye black. And then we'll throw our shad dot on there. Again, we might use another color shift and just give that body uh, the belly area like a shimmer but we'll see what this looks like first and kind of go from there
sure how well that comes across on camera, but a little goes a very long way. On that or color shift on the uh, on the dark around the eyes, but I didn't want my shad dot to turn out like that, so I'll add the shad dot now. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna call that good. We'll put this green gold cold blue. And we'll flip the bait over and we'll do it from the belly and just let a little bit of it come up towards that uh, towards that lateral line. That one's probably going to be hard to hard to see in the camera. It is it is hard for me to see in person. But I know it's there and you know it's there, so Let's see if I can try to show that. Yeah, it's very difficult to see, but it's on there, I promise. So now, clean this brush out again, put the shad dot on. Then usually after that, I'll throw a coat of UVLS. Just mixed with the uh, 4011 reducer. I'll put a nice thick coat of that on there just to protect the paint and give the um, give the clear coat a nice nice clean surface and instead of just doing the free-handed uh, shad dot or just the traditional circle uh, I like to use stencils to make those shad dots what I typically do is just take like underneath of this is a it's probably a crappie or a bluegill but I'll just find a find a spot that I like like this one, I'll just tape off everything and that's what my shad dot's going to be. So I already have that one painted. I do the same thing with the gill plates, but I have that one painted. So we'll go, or excuse me, that one taped. So we'll just go ahead and use that as our shad dot. I like to put my shad dot, a lot of people put it like right on the lateral line, about a half an inch back from the gill plate. I like to keep mine up towards the top more. I'll do to try to make this somewhat even is we'll pick a place and I'll just usually count over on the scales so we'll say say three over right there and then I'll do the same thing on the other side and then it'll just give us a give us a point of reference so we can line that that stencil up Typically if you don't have the stencil painted or taped off to the extent that I do you can you can get a good idea of where you're at But since I have this one piled in tape And I'm just hitting it with a little bit of paint And then shutting the paint off and just giving it some air just to dry that out Just so it doesn't run And there's our shed dot so we'll do the same thing on the other side. Something like that. Definitely looks shad-ish to me. 
All right. Well, let's throw a coat of UVLS on here. So the UVLS I just put in a little cup with 4011, mix it up with a little toothpick. I like to get it very thin, just applies much easier. And then I do multiple coats. So I'm not gonna bore you with this part. I'll fast forward or we'll skip over and we'll come back when we're getting ready to figure out what eyes we're using. All right, so now she's got the UVLS on there. Hopefully you guys can see that color shift on there. Got mixed feelings about the neon yellow or the neon chartreuse rather. One way I like it because it pops. The other way it's kind of kind of too bright, but you can see the uh, the shed dot is very distinct. You can see when you turn it certain ways in the light, the textured pattern that we put in across the top essentially disappears. And then once you get back in the right light, it becomes visible again. So that should work pretty good when it's uh, when she's swimming through the water. But yeah, that will definitely catch some fish. So let's figure out what eyes we're putting on this thing. Again, we don't have too many options with this size eye. Hmm. Tempted to go with these. It's kind of hard to see. They do have hints of silver and gold in there. I was leaning towards towards this one right here, which is more silver. But we're gonna we're gonna go with these. toss a little dab on there mainly it's just to hold it while we uh, get the clear coat on there that's what I need to do is I need to buy some more of these uh, figure out exactly what size these eyes are and get some more variety. I have about a thousand eyes, but this size, I do not have very many options. I could go with a smaller eye. I just don't like the look of that, that gap around it. These don't have round pupils in these, so you kind of Kind of try to pay attention how you oriented the first one. I think that should be good. All right. Eyes are on. Now she's ready for clear coat. And this is what we're using for clear coat. It's just the BSI 30 minute slow cure epoxy. I've used a ton of this stuff and it's fantastic. Only things you gotta worry about is air bubbles, which I have a little map gas torch. Um, you could do the same thing with a heat gun uh, and just go over the bait just really quickly, really uh, thoroughly with the map gas torch or heat gun and uh, get any of them little air bubbles out before you throw it in the turner. But we're going to mix some of this up. I'm going to get this thing clear coated and I will show you the finished product after that. All right, we got the clear coat on. It's been sitting in the turner for about 45 minutes or so. So it's set up pretty good, but it still needs to cure for at least 12 to 24 hours before you fish with it. But shad pattern done. See that sweet color shift. That blue to green. Put some hints of gold. So yeah, I think it turned out pretty decent. Threw our logo on the bottom, make it official. 
But yeah, hope you liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more painting. Drop some comments below what you want to see painted, and we'll see if we can make that happen for you. Other than that, we'll see you on the next one.